Hey, this is Gergay. A philosophy of software design? Is this book any good? Let's take a look. In this review, I'll share three things I liked about this book. The things I didn't, and I'll give you my verdict. As a software engineer, should you get this book and read it? The first impression of this book that is short and pretty light. If you look at the chapters themselves, they're also short. Just take a look at chapter 5, Information Hiding and Leakage. Yep, that was a whole chapter. At first, this shortness made me skeptical. Just how much can you pack into a short book all about architecture? Turns out you actually can if you're a good writer. Talking about authors, who is this author who wrote the book? John Osterhout is a professor at Stanford and teaches a software design class. Students work through a series of projects to practice design principles throughout a semester. John wrote this book after teaching the class three times. Now this is really interesting because it's typically not how software design is done. In the real world, you design once and you ship once. You don't get second chances to figure out if choosing a different architecture approach would have worked better. But in John's case, he taught a class with the same amount of people through a semester, then again, and again. And he was able to observe what approaches worked and what did not. And this is how this book was written. This is a very unique approach. I've not seen other books follow this methodology. There are 21 chapters in the book and you can read each of them in about 10 minutes. The first thing I liked about the book is getting a fresh definition of what software design is. I had my thoughts, but the book came with a new one. The whole idea of the book revolves around complexity. According to the author, software design is a means to fight complexity. Quoting the book, the greatest limitation in writing software is our ability to understand the systems we are creating. The larger the program, the more people work on it, the more difficult it is to manage complexity. Good development tools can help us deal with complexity, but there's a limit to what tools can do alone. Simpler design allows us to build larger and more powerful systems before complexity becomes overwhelming. The second thing I liked about the book is how it gives a fresh and simple look on architecture. It's not a book filled with complex diagrams. One of the few diagrams in the book is this one. The book is filled with simple ideas and observations, but these ideas compound into something more powerful. In the first half of the book, each chapter introduces an idea on software design and how to manage complexity. So tactical versus strategic programming, modules should be deep, information hiding and leakage, general purpose models are deeper, different layer, different abstraction, pull complexity downwards, better together or better apart. Each of these chapters talks about a simple approach to reduce complexity. Take the chapter Information Hiding and Information Leakage. This chapter discusses how information hiding and good design are connected. John noticed that students who divided their code into small modules that were shallow ended up with a lot of duplicated business logic caused by information leakage. This also reinforces why John thinks modules should be deep, an idea that I also agree with. The third thing I liked was the chapter on Design It Twice. This is a chapter that's three pages long and explains a seemingly simple idea that you should design something twice and then compare the trade-offs. It's brilliant because it actually works. I've seen it in action. And it works brilliant because barely anyone does it. When was the last time that you did two different designs? Yeah, I really also do this. To be good at design, do it more and try out different approaches. The second part of the book has chapters on errors, comments, and naming. If you have less experience with software development, you'll probably find this interesting. I didn't get too many new things in the second part of the book. There are two things that I didn't like about the book. First, I really miss how it never talked about how architecture and testability are related. I actually emailed the author who said this was on purpose. Still, I disagree when talking about good architecture, but not talking about designing systems that can be tested by automated tests. Second, there's no ebook and there's no plans for one. So if you want to read this book, you'll have to get the physical copy. So my verdict, is it a good book? No, it's a great book. This book is great because it focuses on the essence of software design, a means to reduce complexity. And the book also reduced its own complexity, so it's easy to read. Even the cover is related to this. Up here you see complexity, down here you see simplicity. If you're a software engineer who plans and builds systems, you should absolutely get this book. You can find a link below to buy the book, and you can also read a longer review that I wrote on my blog. If you like this review, subscribe to my channel for more content on software engineering and engineering management. Finally, if you're interested about my thoughts on software design, I've linked an article below on why I think software architecture is overrated and clear and simple design is underrated. Thanks.